No matter what is powering your vehicle, if you want to go a long way on the highway while using a little bit of fuel, you're going to want a sedan. So how does Polestar's most efficient single motor rear wheel drive version of their two model do at highway speeds? Today we find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor. And tonight we've got the real world highway fuel economy and range test on the 2024 Polestar 2 single motor. In this test, we're gonna head out on the highway and do 50 miles out and 50 miles back, averaging 70 miles per hour to get a realistic range figure for this compact electric sedan. Now before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. The Polestar 2 really uh, straddles this interesting market segment in that it's not a luxury vehicle, but it is also nicer and a little bit more pricey than what you'd consider just your standard everyday sort of uh, common car. This one you're looking at is the more affordable powertrain option. It's the single motor. There's also a dual motor all wheel drive option that drops your range down a little bit. This one is about, if I remember correctly, about $56,000, although that price really can change. I think at the moment you can get a few thousand dollars off by picking up one of these out of inventory here in July of 2024. So either way, there's a lot to like about this rear wheel drive model. I think it's more compelling than the all wheel drive. So if you do want to see more of my thoughts on it, check the link below for our full review. We've also got a dedicated review of the quite good Harman Kardon sound system in here. So why do we do this test? Well, the EPA's range test, which gives this Polestar 2 307, very specific number there, 307 miles of range, that's in mixed driving. In highway driving, it estimates about 283 miles of range for this Polestar 2, but that highway fuel economy test only averages 48 miles per hour. We know there are plenty of people who need to get on the highway and cruise steady state at highway speeds, and would like to know what sort of numbers they can realistically expect in those scenarios. So in order to test it out, we're going, we're 100% charged up now. We just left my house, it was 0.4 miles away. So we're gonna get right on the highway, do those 100 miles, come right back to my house, charge all the way back up to full, and we're gonna report on what our battery had dropped down to, but because the state of charge isn't always linear on all vehicles, we're gonna charge the car all the way back up, see how much electricity it took, and then extrapolate our range based on the total battery capacity. Now, a few other things to note for today, outside temperature is currently 76 degrees Fahrenheit. That'll probably drop down to about 70, 72 or so by the time we're done. Our tire pressures have been set to their door placard, 41 PSI front and 42 PSI rear, which, side note, that is a little high. So if you own a Polestar 2 and you, range isn't a huge deal for you and, you and you'd like to soften your ride a little bit, maybe drop that down to 38, possibly even 36 PSI, you might experience better ride quality. Uh, and we're going to have the climate control set at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I might bump it up to 74 every now and again. Typically we run 73, but the Polestar, like a lot of the Volvos, can only run at even numbers in Fahrenheit here. So uh, I'll probably do 72. Without any further ado, I think it's time to roll. So we've got our GPS reset. Let's get our time lapse going. Start the car up and let's reset our trip computer. Get our climate rolling and we are ready to roll. Interestingly, no sort of dry modes here in the Polestar 2, which I'm actually totally okay with. The car drives really nicely. It's got a good amount of throttle response for easy driving. It's got a good amount of throttle response when you really wanna get on it hard. So I'm good. I'm good with, with the with the no dry modes, and I think a lot of times eco modes sort of are are I'm not gonna say damaging, but not worthwhile. If just just make the car be efficient in all sort of driving. So I do think we might have some sort of eco climate mode, if I'm not mistaken. But either way, we just got uh, just got the the normal drive mode. We're gonna take it nice and easy here, getting onto the highway. Now the goal of this test isn't a hypermile, we're not trying to get the best possible range out of this car, but rather a realistic figure. So in order to do that, I'm getting up to highway speed here at a reasonable pace, I'm going to set our cruise control at a GPS indicated at 71 miles per hour. That should allow us to average 70 over the whole test. I also like these range tests because it gives me an opportunity to 
experience the car in a very repeatable and sterile environment, just cruising on the highway. Something that, again, a lot of people have to do with their cars where they'll experience a lot of the pros and cons. And I will say one of the cons of the Polestar is because of this big uncoverable glass roof, it's a little loud in here. It's not as bad as our Tesla Model Y was, but there's definitely some of that echo and reflection of sound. And I already know from driving this car around that the active lane keeping functionality is frustrating in that you really have to interact with the wheel a lot in order to remind it that you're still there. And there have been times, we'll see if we experience them here in a moment coming to the straighter section where I've just got my hand lightly on the steering wheel driving like I normally would and it doesn't think I'm touching the wheel. And so if you don't catch it, it starts beeping at you. So right now I've clearly got my hand on the wheel. And we'll see, yep, right there. It's saying hold steering wheel, so I squeeze it and then it goes away. But sometimes if you don't catch that, it's a bit annoying. Now the range meter did say 320 miles before we set off. Now it's down to 290, so it's obviously adapting a bit for our driving situation. You can actually change whether that range meter adapts to your driving or sticks at the factory recommended range figures based on your charge level. Another interesting thing about being at 100% charge in the Polestar 2 is that you still have a strong amount of regen. It's not like the Teslas or some other electric vehicles where when you were charged up to 100, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't have any regen. Oh, another thing, the adaptive cruise control is so conservative. If there's even somewhat of a car a little bit in front of you, like that Escape was there for a moment, you feel it really tense up. But anyway, we are going to continue on with the test here and catch up with you at the end. In the meantime, enjoy this time lapse of the entire trip. of the highway range test here in the Polestar 2 single motor. It's not a bad car to be in on the highway, but it's also not remarkable. It's very in the middle. If we're comparing it to something like the BMW i4, we would much rather be in the i4. Calmer, quieter, more comfortable. But this was less frustrating with the adaptive cruise control and the active lane keeping than I expected it to be. The Harman Kardon sound system is excellent, so that helps. The screen is a nice distance away, so I was able to listen to all my things and touch things around pretty well. Not loving the, the, the sound level in here, but again, it's not jarring, it's just there. Let's see, how easy would it be to turn down the brightness of these screens? But it's, it's pretty bright. I lament the fact that so many cars are moving away from having physical brightness adjustments. Play instrument no? Yeah, see this this is not something that I should be required to take my eyes off the road to be trying to find. And I know once once you knew where it was, then you know, good. Is it up here in the car screen? One pedal more. Interior lights. There you go, interior brightness. That's better. Okay. So again, once I figured it out, not too bad, but just, uh, you gotta, you gotta know. You gotta know with these cars. In terms of range, we are down to 67% state of charge, essentially a third of the battery down, and we've traveled nearly 100 miles and have nearly 200 left, so fairly happy to report that we do seem to be tracking the EPA's figure here. If we bring up our efficiency, we're looking at 
26.5 kilowatt hours per 100 miles. So I think that'd be 265 watt hours per mile. Watt hours per mile, yeah. 265 watt hours per mile, the way that Tesla reads it out. And that would be just a hair over or under four miles per kilowatt hour, about 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour there. So pretty good figures for cruising on the highway in an EV. But we're gonna get back to the Casa and we're gonna charge this all the way up. We're gonna see how much electricity it took, do some calculations and see what sort of range figures you can expect with a full charge. But uh, for the, the highway eval, I'm fairly satisfied in here. The seat comfort's good and it's a nice place to be, but it feels fitting for the price point for an electric vehicle. Here we are, the next day we charged all the way up to 100% at the house and then headed over here to a parking lot. When I got to 100% battery level, it said 310 miles of range. That's adapted down a little bit now to 280. But we ended up putting in 28.7 kilowatt hours of electricity from the charger. But we assume about a 90% charging efficiency rate, meaning whatever the charger sends, about 90% of that actually makes it into the battery pack when charging up to full on a level two charger. So 28.7 kilowatt hours times 0.9 is giving us 25.8 three kilowatt hours, we're assuming went to the battery. Let's double check how far we traveled. 100.7 miles traveled, 100.7 miles divided by 25.83 kilowatt hours has given us 3.898, so technically rounding up to 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That's, that's a pretty good figure for cruising at 70 miles per hour. I think that's one of the more efficient we've ever done. We've got an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack in here and assuming that whole battery pack is usable, 82 kilowatt hours times 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour is giving you what would technically round up to 320 miles of range here on the highway, but we're gonna round down to the nearest tens to give you a little bit of that wheel room. So just as the car suspected actually, 310 miles of highway range here in the Polestar 2 rear wheel drive single motor configuration. That's pretty darn good. That's a good amount of efficiency. I was comfortable, the climate control was cooking along and decent, uh, you know, like I said, not an outstanding highway cruiser. I still preferred being in the BMW i4, but this would probably be a little bit better than a Model 3. It's been a long time since I've road tripped with a Model 3. I'd really like Tesla to give us one, one of the updated ones so we can review it. But overall, pretty happy here with highway time in the Polestar 2. Not super happy with all the all the um, dust on the screen, but there's not too much you can do about that. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Polestar 2, check the link below. We've got a good amount of coverage. I'm just about to shoot my full review here, and we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.